Well, good morning, everybody. And, oh, hang on, better stop the sound. There we go. Great to uh, have you with us this morning. Uh, welcome to our morning worship this morning on June the 21st. Happy Father's Day to you. Uh, we are the churches here in Stanton by Dale and Dale Abbey and Risley. If this is your first time joining us at one of our online services, you are very welcome. We love to welcome people to our uh, churches here in the Benefice, whether you're one from a, uh, from one of our three villages or from the local area or further afield, it's really good to have you with us. Uh, a big welcome to you. Uh, welcome as well if you're uh, watching on YouTube later on today when we're uploaded to our YouTube page. I hope this is an encouragement to you. And as normal in our kind of online services, do look out for uh, where the bear is this week, okay? The bear is in a bag, but which one? Mm, have a think, see if you know which bag the bear is going to be in. Uh, the music you were listening to, uh, if you were able to log on just before the service started, is a song called Your Word, and it's one that we're going to be uh, singing or listening to later in the service. Uh, there's a few people to say good morning to. I'm going to start by saying good morning to all those who watch but can't put comments up on the side. It's always good to have you with us, and I know there's a few of you, so uh, a big good morning to you guys. Uh, good morning to... The Holwell family, who win the prize this week of being the first to put a comment up. Uh, so well done to the Holwells. Good to have you with us. In fact, it's good to have you all with us, all right? <laughs> uh, good morning to Corinne and Adrian, and to Roger and Sonia Jones, and to Ian Clayton. Good morning as well to Tina, and to uh, Holly and Lucy. Good morning to... Uh, Barry and Chris and Katrina. Now that you've uh, got internet sorted, it's great that you've been able to join us. Morning to Mo and Alan, and good morning to Nick and Ali and to Jim. Uh, good morning to uh, Julie and Gary Sherwood. And ah, uh, Glenn Warren has failed in his plan to be the first to say hi this morning. Let's try again next week, Glenn. Uh, Hello everyone, it's a Sibley wonderful morning. Ralph and Sylvia, there's a football joke in there. Uh, so good morning to Ralph and Sylvia. I think Ralph may be happy and Sylvia that Derby got three points yesterday. But maybe you won't all be. Ooh. Anyway, good morning to Jackson and to Robin and Merrill and to uh, Joan, who's saying especially a good morning to Noreen and Zena. Yes, good morning Noreen and Zena. Good morning to Bob Halls. Ah, look, Noreen and Zena are there as well. Uh, good morning to Tom and Nancy Roper and the Sherwood family and uh, ah, Isabel Davis, one of our family friends and Tom joining us from Scotland this morning. Good to have you with us. And to Mel Eaglesfield Johnson, good morning to you. And good morning to Rachel Hobbs, who's passing on greetings from uh, Glory and Gloria and Wynn, who looks like using the telephone uh, number. Well, that was on the notices before the service. That's brilliant. Uh, Rob and Helen Groom, good morning to you. Esther, Joel and Lydia and Ruth, good to have you with us. And the mother-in-law, <laughs> good morning Shirley and good morning to Jeff. Right, if I've missed anybody off there, forgive me. Um, we've got loads to get on with this morning, so I'm going to uh, make a start. There'll be a chance to say other greetings as well uh, as the service uh, carries on. But do think, which bag is the bear in? There. And... As we make a start, we're, we're looking this morning at Psalm 8, which is a wonderful psalm. I'm just going to read you uh, a couple of verses from verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? It's amazing, isn't it? But God does care, and so we can meet in his name. So let's say this uh, opening prayer together. Through the service, the responses uh, are in the yellow type, okay? So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's say this prayer together. 
Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, next part of our service is we are going to have an update from Jam Club. Jam Club stands for Jesus and Me. It's our kids club uh, and we're trying to encourage uh, children through the weeks, even when we can't meet together, to keep learning more about the Lord Jesus and to equip uh, parents and families in their discipleship of their children. So we're going to have this week's update followed by a song. Okay, so here's uh, Lydia Leaf with this week's uh, Jam Club update. schoolhouse I hope you've had a really good week um, I've had a good week but my eyes aren't great today so bear with me um, but if you can pray for my eyes that would be really helpful now this week we're going to continue with our, our how we need Jesus series and this week it's about how we need Jesus to be our friend so I'm going to do a reading and it's from Matthew 9 9 to 13 and that can be paid on one, found on page 1059. So it starts like this uh, now. Jesus chooses Matthew and eats with sinners. So Jesus saw a man named Matthew. He was sitting at the tax collector's booth. Tax collectors were not popular then and they're not very popular now. Follow me, Jesus told him. So Matthew just got up and followed him. But later, Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and sinners came. They ate with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this, so they asked the disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Well, Jesus heard this and he said, those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Ill people do. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. I have not come to get those who think they're right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Well, a lot of people think they are right with God and that they don't need to change their ways. They think they're just doing just fine without Jesus or God. But I think if we have a really jolly good look, we'll find that we all need Jesus and we all need God. You see, some people are a bit like the Pharisees. They are horrified at people who Jesus invites to be his friends. Hopefully, by feeling and knowing that Jesus includes sinners in his friendship circle will change their attitude, help them, and it'll help us include them in our friendship circle too. And it'll help us point the way to Jesus. You see, Jesus welcomes us, he forgives us, and he calls us his friend. And I'd like to say a prayer just to say thank you, Jesus, for calling me to be your friend. Now, this week, I thought we'd do something for friendships. And I have made a friendship bracelet. It's just some wool tied up here. And then I've plaited it. Now, I've put it on a, um, well, I actually got Mr. Leaf. I asked Mr. Leaf to hold it for me. And he did hold it. And I then plaited it. And it came out a bit like this one. I'm quite pleased with that. I was really, I thought that was lovely. And I think he quite likes that too because it's green and Mr. Leaf does like green. Then I also made a friendship, a friendship banner. So in the middle I've put Jesus is a friend to sinners. And then I've put me there. Who would you put here at the other side of that one? Who would you invite to be in your friendship group 
It might not be completely obvious who you would invite. It might be somebody who you think, I don't always like playing with them when I'm at school or they cause a bit of trouble or they're not the cool kid. But actually, maybe you'd like to invite them to be Jesus, to be Jesus's friend with you. So to do that, you concertina up some paper, look, like that. And then you have to draw around the folded bit. I got it wrong, so that's why I'm showing you. You have to draw around this half piece and then you cut it out. Just make sure you cut right to the edge each time because otherwise you cut the arms off and everybody becomes single. And that's not what about being a friend is. So there we go. Let's hope and pray that this is right. Oh yes, there we go. So you could make a friendship banner. The other thing I thought you could do, because it's Father's Day tomorrow, and uh, I thought we could do, you could do a Father's Day card. There's Mr. Leaf, look, looking very handsome in his green shirt. And under his shirt is a tie. And it says, Jesus is my friend. So I thought you could make that. You could make a little card. So, I hope you have a really good week. Next week might be somebody different doing these videos. So, enjoy. God bless. Have a good week. We're going to sing a song about our very good God who loves and cares for us. It's called Clap Your Hands. Now I'm sure you already know how to clap your hands, but just in case you don't, you take one hand and the other hand and you hit them together and they make a sound like this. Hang on. That's not right. Oh, there we go. Okay, how about you clap along with me? Thank you to Lydia for this week's video and I hope you enjoyed that song too. Uh, we really want to uh, keep praying for and equipping our families for following the Lord Jesus and our young people too. Now in that Bible reading from Matthew chapter 9 that the children are focusing on this week we hear Jesus say this, it's not the healthy who need a doctor but those who are ill. He's not come to heal the righteous but the sick. We need Jesus as a friend, and the great thing is that Jesus is known as a friend of sinners. 
And so we come to this part in the service now where we can each, from our homes, wherever we are, confess our sin before our Heavenly Father, knowing that he is faithful and just and will forgive us if we confess our sins to him. So again, the responses are in the, in the yellow text. After each time I say, Father, forgive us, if you could say, save us and help us. Let's pray together. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Amen. Ooh, just get the right slide. Here we go. It's brilliant, isn't it, that Jesus is known as a friend of sinners. It gives us all hope. We're all guilty of sin and we need his forgiveness. Now, I did ask at the start of our service today, which bag is the bear in? Okay, let's take a look, see if we can work it out. Here we go. Now then. Just get the bags down. Right. Uh, which bag do you think? If you're watching this with other people at home, uh, make a guess. Which bag do you think it's in? Okay, we're going to take a look in this big one. First of all, let's see. Turn it around. If you chose the brown one, there we go. If you chose the brown one, there's the bear. Brilliant. Look at that. Oh, the excitement. And if you chose the silver one, there's a bear in this one too. What is going on? Look, there's two bears. That's because, I don't know if you can tell the size difference, this one is the daddy bear. Ha <laughs> ha, it's Father's Day, isn't it? So today for Father's Day, just want to acknowledge uh, the privilege that it is of being a dad and that in a benefit we want to value and uphold and equip and bless fathers and to help them in that role because it's a really special job. For some, Father's Day is a great day. But it's right to acknowledge too that for some Father's Day is a sad day because perhaps your father isn't still alive. Or for others, Father's Day is a difficult day because actually your dad wasn't the kind of father that he should have been. And it's right to acknowledge that on this day. In the Bible, we're told to honour our father and mother. And that's kind of with no strings attached, whether your father and mother are good or not. And so we need to pray for all of us that we would honour our father and mother, whether they're alive or not, that we would kind of honour them. Um, and that, that, that can be difficult for folks to do. But we want to, to value and help and equip people who are dads at the moment to do a good job of that role. And also in the Bible, there is great news, isn't there? There is great hope for everybody, regardless of what our earthly dad is like, that God is our heavenly father. That's how he chooses to be known to us. We can call him Abba, father. That's like calling him daddy. That is the intimate relationship that is open to us uh, with God because of what Jesus has done for us. Isn't that remarkable? And our heavenly father is slow to anger, rich in love. That's a perfect kind of dad, isn't it? Let's pray just now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Father's Day. We thank you for all of the dads 
uh, in our benefice. Lord, uh, please help all of us who are dads to be godly, to be wise and to model our parenting on how you care for us. Help us to be slow to anger and rich in love. Father, help us all, Lord, to honour our mother and our father. And especially, Lord, we pray for your help and comfort for those for whom today is either a, th a sad day or a difficult day. We thank you, Lord, that we can bring before you exactly how we're feeling. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to turn now to God's Word. So if you've got a Bible to hand, we're going to be reading from Psalm 8. And the words are also going to be coming up on the screen for you. And this week, uh, Glenn Warren is bringing us our Bible reading. Today's Old Testament reading is Psalm 8, a Psalm of David. Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Glyn, for bringing us our Bible reading this week. Uh, in a few moments, uh, Robin is going to be teaching us uh, from that passage. So if you've got a Bible, do keep it open. Before that, a few notices for you for this week. Uh, moving forward, we're going to be doing our morning prayer services on a Wednesday at 10 o'clock. So this week, Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock, will be our next morning prayer service. I will send out the service sheet uh, for that via email. Um, so if you're not on the email list, do, do get in touch. Also, it'd be great if you'd consider joining us after the service for our virtual uh, coffee. Uh, there's only a, a small group, relatively small group of people doing that, but... It's a really encouraging time together to uh, catch up and see how everyone's doing and uh, chat about the service. So do consider joining us after the service uh, for the for our virtual coffee. I know that uh, Ed would be happy to share the details uh, with you on that. Um, ah, for PCC members, don't forget we've got a meeting on Tuesday night via Zoom. I sent out the code last night. Um, if you're not on the PCC... Please can you be praying that our meeting on Tuesday night is fruitful and honouring to God. Uh, a couple of other practical things. Uh, I'm getting a new internet provider installed this week. So hopefully that should help eliminate some of the problems we've had recently and which we nearly had this morning. At 20 past 10 it wasn't looking likely but uh, God has overruled and we are online today so that's great. Um, and also, I am working behind the scenes with the wardens regarding opening up uh, our buildings and especially making sure that they are ready for funerals. I think it's going to be of limited value opening them for, for private prayer because I don't want to give the misconception that you can only pray to God when you're uh, in a church building or that your prayers count for more in the church building. That's not true. We can pray anywhere to our Heavenly Father and he hears us. God isn't uh, concerned about the location of our prayers, he's concerned about our hearts and the condition of our hearts. Um, but it will be useful to be able to offer our buildings uh, to our communities for funerals. So I am working with the wardens uh, behind the scenes uh, to do that. Um, it's worth just stopping and, and pausing at, at this moment to say a big thank you to the ministry team 
Uh, so our church wardens, that's Anne Cousins and Bob Halls in Dale Abbey, and Robin uh, Lacey and Elaine Warren here in Stanton by Dale, and Rob Groom and um, Roger Jones in Risley. Also to Nick Jackson and to our readers, to Ralph and Robin and Rachel and again Elaine who works as our administrator. All these guys have been working really hard behind the scenes during this season of lockdown to make sure uh, we can still do all that we're doing. So personally I would like to, to thank them for their, uh, their hard work and their support. Great, I think that's all the notices uh, for today. Just like to say good morning to uh, uh, Lydia and Simon and to Mary Sisson and the Stanbury family, so James and Terry and Freddie. It's great to have you guys joining us as well. Okay, let's say uh, the collect, or I'll lead us rather in the collect, as I haven't got the words on the screen for this. So I will lead us in the collect, and then Charlotte Holwell is going to continue and lead us in prayer. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now then. Here's uh, Charlotte leading us in our prayers. Let us pray. From the Psalms. Give ear to my word, O Lord. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. Heavenly Father, when our minds can barely grapple with the scale of the coronavirus pandemic and the depths of anger and helplessness in countries worldwide after the unnecessary death of George Floyd and our worries over the social and economic consequences of lockdown, we do indeed lift our heads to you with much sighing and crying for help. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, consider us with mercy, enable us to know and speak your truth and hope. Grant us inspiration and strength to serve our communities with practical help. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we lift to you the places in the world where there are many fewer resources to fight the COVID-19 virus. We pray for rural communities, for poor urban districts and refugee camps that are often isolated physically and economically. Father, give strength, confidence and compassion to those who make decisions and serve in these difficult places. Where there are Christian charities working, we pray that you will bless them with the financial resources they need to make a difference, strength and support for their work and the opportunity to speak of your love and care. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, the sight of the protests following George Floyd's death in America has raised many questions. We pray for all those in authority, that leaders of integrity, honesty and impartiality will rise up, and that those with power will use it with generosity, that those with influence will use it with discretion, that we would be mindful of each other, careful to not be hypocritical. May the review ordered by the Prime Minister have real insight into the fears and reality of others' lives, and may any action be delivered by consensus. Father, search our hearts and minds. Lead us to understand our faults. Help us to be humble. And to remember the words of Scripture. So in everything you do, do to others what you would have done to you. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. 
Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you, Charlotte, for leading us in prayer this week. Let's join together now by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Again, the words are on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let's join now with countless generations of Christian believers, both through history and around the world, even today. And let's affirm our faith in God. There you go, the words are on the screen. We say together, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now, in recent weeks, we have had some interviews from different uh, members of the church family uh, regarding their experience of life in lockdown. And this week, we are going to be hearing from Joan Stapleton. So here's an interview that I conducted with Joan uh, just a couple of days ago. And a big thank you to Joan for being willing to be interviewed. Great. So uh, it's my privilege today to uh, have Joan Stapleton with us. And Joan, we've got a few questions for you this morning. Thanks for being willing to be interviewed. Uh, the first one, Joan, is, I wonder if you could just tell us briefly how you became a Christian. Right. Well, this happened a long, long time ago in the <laughs> annals of history. <laughs> um, I was a time in my life when I was very conscious of being very sinful. Not that I knew the word sin as such, mm. um, but I, I was, I'd been brought up more or less to go to Sunday school and things like that. But I, I, I was more or less going to church. But then at the same time, I was very conscious that it didn't seem to be real to me. And then uh, in this situation, a friend of mine from before, from several years before, told me about the Lord Jesus, that she had become a Christian, which surprised me because I knew she was English and I knew she was she was good as far as I was concerned and uh, so she was talking to me and telling me about the Lord Jesus and then simply said to me you need to ask the Lord Jesus to be your savior and so about a few days later when I went to her for a meeting to, to hear her speak uh, that's exactly what I did and asked the Lord Jesus to be my savior because I'd been trying that whole week beforehand to live like a Christian and it didn't work. So I told her this. And so she said, well, that's because you're trying to do it without the Lord Jesus living in your heart, taking away your sin and making you God's child. So that's what I did that night. I became a Christian with her. Wow. You want to hear any more? Well, that's... <laughs> I was told you <laughs> I'd love so. to hear more. It's fantastic. <laughs> now, that's obviously had a, a, a massive impact on your life because you're still following 
the Lord Jesus um, all these years later. Just um, just tell us briefly, Joan, I'm sneaking this question in. Um, you, you haven't always lived in the UK, have you? What, what, where have you lived? No, no, since? I, uh, I, well, in 1968, I went to Hong Kong to be a missionary there with an organisation called Child Evangelism Fellowship which means that they they work in nowadays many more countries than they did then but uh, they work amongst children telling them about the lord jesus and encouraging them to trust the lord jesus their savior and then to learn to live for him as a christian a born again christian somebody who knows jesus day by day moment by moment mm -hmm. and so that's what i did in 1968 and then later on, I became the trainer for the region because we also did training classes for men and women who were Christians and wanted to learn how to talk to children about the Lord Jesus. So I worked as a trainer in the region of, of the Asia Pacific until 2003, when I sort of started then to come back to England. It was 2006 when I came back completely and then stayed here for until yeah. the Lord took me home to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Oh, thank you. Now, that question wasn't on the list, was it? So thank you for sharing. <laughs> brilliant. Uh, I just wonder, uh, Joan, if you'd be willing to share uh, your experience, really, or, or some of the challenges you faced during lockdown. Uh, well, those of you who know me know that um, I find it very difficult to get around and since I had to give up my car two years ago I can't go anywhere except uh, if somebody takes me um, so I have found it very frustrating particularly that I, I can't go out and about and, and see people and see things but I'm very very thankful because um, here where I live in Dale Abbey I have got the most lovely view out of my sitting room window and even the back window looks out onto trees and to grass. And, and so that's been good. But at the same time, I'm very conscious of the fact that I do end up some days feeling very miserable and sort of, why is this happening to me? Mm. And then, um, yeah, so some days are bad, but some days are very good. And uh, so I, I guess it's sort of a mixture. It's just sort of keeping on, keeping on. Mm. That's what uh, I can remember when I was a very young person, somebody said to me once in a meeting, uh, the thing to do when you're following God is to keep on keeping on. And I thought, mm, how boring and how terribly just not, not really acceptable. And so I found that, that my days sometimes have been like that. And very frustrating because I can't do the things that I want to do and not having any... Um, helper come to clean my house or to help me with things that I can't do is, is kind of frustrating mm. and tests the ability to be um, creative in trying to find other ways to do things. So that's difficult. And, yeah. um, and, and not being able just to, to meet up with people, that's, that's quite frustrating too. Yeah. But these yeah. days remain difficulties, I think. Oh, thank Probably you. everybody has the same kind of difficulty. Well, uh, I, I'm sure that you know many people will sh will, will, will share those frustrations. Um, how how Joan has being a Christian, know, knowing the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, how has that helped you with those difficulties? Well, um, I read my Bible <clears throat> every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I read my Bible every day and, and talk to God every day, mostly in the mornings. Um, and not just limited to that, because um, being at home and all day and free to do whatever I like with nowhere else to go, um, <laughs> if I get to the point where I think, oh, I can't go on, Lord, it's just too hard, then I can turn to my Bible, which is so wonderful. And because I've memorized so many scriptures over the years, um, it's just so wonderful because in the midst of times when I feel most frustrated, I can have a little laugh and say to myself, oh, come on, Joan, pull your socks up, gird up your loins, as it says in the Bible, yeah. and keep going. And the Lord is so gracious and so 
loving and kind that he he always he sends me lots of little things years and years ago reading about a missionary called amy carmichael she said um that whenever she had a time of reading the bible she would begin and prayer she would begin it with a, a quiet moment just a quiet moment focusing on god and so this is something that really helps me just during the day and, and just thinking okay well what does god say about it and then also in the middle of laughing about things when i get into a little little muddle like dropping so many cups this last three weeks that i I've, I've only got two left out of the six that i bought originally oh, so that's all right i've got others around but <laughs> but the thing is <clears throat> in the middle of that then god gives words from the scriptures that i have learned and they mm -hmm. pop into my head and and it, it sort of turns the situation around so that, that's what's so important about being a christian god is right there with you every minute of every day and he sees the bad things mm -hmm. but god is still the same he doesn't change and so that's that's the thing that that helps as a christian I think. Oh, brilliant, Joan. That's so helpful. And that's uh, it's so lovely how that ties in with what we've been learning from the Psalms over recent weeks mm -hmm. of, uh, in a way, kind of preaching to yourself, reminding yourself in the midst of trouble and toil and hardship and difficult times, reminding ourselves what we know about God. Oh, that's great personal testimony. Thank you. Um, and Joan, how, how can we pray for you? Uh, well, to be to remember those times <laughs> yeah. just to sort of say uh just remind joan when when she forgets lord just remind her that about all the wonderful things that god has done that's the thing so, and there's no shortage of those so many lovely things happen people come like um, somebody i mustn't name names because that's not fair but uh, um somebody came last sunday and bought their chair and sat outside the kitchen door and I sat on my stool in the kitchen and we had a natter together. And mm. then another time, a dear young lady who has just finished all her training and started as a, a doctor. Uh, she's a very particular friend of mine, although she's extremely young compared to my ancient age. And she also bought, uh, um, well, she didn't, well, she, she came and sat on the bench outside and by the back door. And yeah. then I opened my door and she even bought her own, cup of tea and actually in fact it was a, a busk of water and sat there and talked to me for nearly an hour and then we prayed together before she went so oh, that's brilliant. the lord is so good and i think that's the thing pray that, that the lord would help me to keep on keeping on brilliant probably have to cut some of this <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Let, let's pray joan let's pray father god thank you lord for your goodness to us even in the midst of trials and Father, thank you, Lord, that you equip us uh, to do the mundane things, Lord, of keeping on, keeping on. Help us all, Lord, to be faithful to you in that. And Lord, we pray uh, for Joan, Lord, and for all of us, that in those uh, moments where we're struggling, that we would remind ourselves uh, things that we know about you, that you would draw things to our mind to encourage us to keep on keeping on and honouring you as our Lord and Saviour. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Joan, thank you so much. Great. Well, thank you, Joan, uh, for being willing to share a bit about your experience of life in lockdown. And I'm afraid I couldn't work out which bits to cut because there was so much helpful stuff in there. So I hope as a wider congregation listening in, you found that helpful too. We're going to turn in song now as we... In a moment, we're going to consider God's word in more detail. We're going to uh, hear or you can sing along with this song, Your Word. Joan talk, uh, spoke about the encouragement that God's word gives to her uh, each day. Uh, we've heard it read from Matthew 9 and from Psalm 8. And in a moment uh, after this song, Robin is going to teach us from uh, Psalm 8. So let's enjoy this song now. As with other weeks, feel free to sing along if you'd like to or, or, or just learn it and listen in and let it be an encouragement to you. After this song, Robin will be preaching for us. Your word is 
is good, it's ever faithful, worth more than gold, the heart's delight, your work is alive, to all who hear and obey, your word endures forever, your word is true, it never changes. It formed the earth, sustains it still. Your word defends, providing refuge and strength. Your word endures forever. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a light unto my path. Who do not know me, uh, my name is Robin and I'm a licensed reader in the benefice here. Now today we're going to continue working through our sermon series on the Psalms. And this morning it's my privilege, and I yes it is a privilege, to share this wonderful inspiring psalm with you. It's a psalm of praise and I'm speaking of course of Psalm 8. However, uh, before getting to the business in hand, let's have a little food for thought. We are just about to enter into what I think is the 14th week of the lockdown. And it has to be acknowledged that times have not been very easy. Many people have found this period of their lives to be very, very difficult. All of our normal routines have been turned upside down. 
many of us unable to work, the more vulnerable unable to go outside, children not able to go to school. We've been unable to meet our friends and our loved ones. The list of restrictions is endless. And the reason for all of this? Well, as we are all only too well aware, COVID-19 is the threat that we're living under. A time of extreme danger for all of us. And in many ways a time when we turn in on ourselves. A time for bunkering down, as it were. And the question that we all have? Well, when? When will it all come to an end? With this in mind, can I suggest that perhaps the best attitude or the best antidote to our negative thinking and our self-centred attitudes is to lift our focus from ourselves and instead to turn to our Creator God. He, God, is our hope in times of doubt and trial. He is our future. Not the threat of COVID-19 with all of its implications. And what better reminder do we have of that than in the words of this psalm, Psalm 8. A psalm in which David, despite all that's gone wrong in his life, turns to praise his and also our majestic God. But before turning to David and his insights revealed in this psalm, we'll have a word of prayer. And I pray, come Holy Spirit, open up our hearts and set us on fire for God through your word today. Enable and empower us to be the witnesses and the servants that we're called to be that God may be glorified in our lives. Amen. So then, on to Psalm 8. But first of all, perhaps uh, a resume of the series thus far. And as always with me, there's a question. It's a question that I've asked on more than one occasion previously. And it's this. How are you today? And the usual answer, of course, me? I'm fine. How often have we been part of such a conversation? Not exactly an in-depth conversation, is it? Just another example of a brief interchange as two friends pass by and touch each other with a brief cliché or two. Symptoms, perhaps, of what is no more than a superficial relationship. A relationship lacking in depth and honesty. Now this is something that has been challenging me, really challenging me, during these past few weeks as we've been working through the Psalms. The truth is that often this pattern of superficial communication spills over into our conversations with God. We can so easily fall into the trap of praying using the usual well-worn phrases, the things that we feel that we ought to be praying, sooner than what deep down we want and we need to be praying. And praying in this way, our prayers can become very, very shallow. Now, we should be in no doubt whatsoever that prayer is fundamental to our relationship with God and that he really does want us to be real with him. Now, of course, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that our lo loving God hears and understands all of our prayers. But by limiting the depth of our feelings, the depth of our hopes and our aspirations, we can easily become shallow in our relationship with him. And that, quite simply, is not the relationship that he wants us to have with him. Let's face it. He already knows our innermost thoughts. He knows our feelings. 
and it's these thoughts and these feelings that he really does want to share with us. He wants us to have a genuine, honest and real relationship with him, a good, meaningful conversation. And this, surely, is the underlying message of the book of Psalms. The message that has been stressed again and again during these past few weeks. At the very heart of the Bible we find the book of Psalms. And here we have a great collection of songs and prayers that express the heart and soul of our relationship with God. In these Psalms the whole range of human experience is expressed. There are no, no clichés here. What we do have in the Psalms is David and the other writers honestly pouring out their true feelings, reflecting a dynamic, a powerful and a life-changing friendship with God. The Psalmists confess their sins, they express their doubts and fears. They ask God for help in their troubles. And then, recognising that God is their source of help, they turn to Him in praise, in thanksgiving and in worship. Simply put, the Psalms are there to meet us when we're deep down in the valley, as it were, and then to transport us to the very top of the mountain. They cover the whole gambit of human emotion. Now to date in this series on the Psalms we have heard examples of David calling out to God from the depth of his despair, from those times when he is felt to be deep down in the valley. Yet at the same time, recognising that God was the only real answer to his problems. However, it seems that today, in Psalm 8, we find David at the very top of the mountain. We find him with his heart overflowing with praise and with adoration of his God. Seemingly on a real spiritual high. Now, quite obviously, we don't really know the depth, uh, the, the circumstances that David's in at this time as he writes this psalm. Maybe, just maybe, God has just saved him from one of the many difficulties and dangers that seem to beset David at every turn, many of whom, it does have to be said, are as a result of his own sin his own rebellion against God. By way of an aside perhaps, something here for us all to ponder on. However, whatever his circumstances, David, at this moment in his life, is in no doubt whatsoever of the majesty of his God. His words of praise and recognition spill out one after the other, and so, finally, we come to the psalm itself and what it has to say to all of us here today. However, before we begin to consider this psalm in detail, we'll begin with a bit of an overall view. This psalm is very much a hymn of praise and of celebration. It reflects on our privileged position in the order of creation. A position that is set out in the first two chapters of Genesis right at the beginning, specifically in chapter 1 and verse 27 where we read, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. Mankind then is made in the likeness of God. And thus, this places us at the very pinnacle of created order. Now, whilst this psalm very much reflects the covenant relationship 
between God and his chosen people and was therefore originally intended for singing by the Israelites, it nevertheless speaks of mankind in general terms and so embraces the whole of mankind, the Jews being but the firstborn of the whole of restored humanity. The restoration that was initiated by Jesus and then instigated and carried forward by St Paul and others in their message to the Gentiles. This psalm then is as much a hymn of praise for Christians today as it was for David and the Jews of his time. Just one more thing <clears throat> before we finally get to grips with the passage itself. One final question for you. When you're doing your shopping, are you ever drawn to a product by its packaging? Well, whether you are or not, the truth of the matter is that much thought has gone into that packaging. It has been designed to draw your attention to the contents inside. Now, in a way, Psalm 8 very much follows this particular principle, packaged as it is between verses 1 and 9, where we read, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now, by packaging the psalm within these two identical uh, verses, David is emphasising the majesty of God. Of course, David here is talking in the first person. It's personal. But as the heading of the psalm implies, it is meant to be used in public worship. And therefore, the assumption is that we too will be inspired by the majesty of God through this psalm. Let's move on. In verse 2, David proclaims, Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against our enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Our children are so often an example to we adults. Seemingly, they are able to trust and to praise God without reservation. The sad truth is, very often as we get older, inhibitions often set in, set, uh, set in, and we come to find praising God with complete abandon something much more difficult to do. So with that in mind, we really do need to be asking God to give us that childlike faith, a faith without inhibition, the faith that will allow us to have that closer walk with him, to be real, to be more honest with him. But what is it that's inspiring David to such a level of praise? The praise expounded in verses 3 to 5 as he proclaims, When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. Now personally, I don't think it's possible for the created being to fully understand the mind and the being of the Creator and thus fully His Majesty. However, in these three verses, David does his best. And bear in mind that at the time of this psalm, Jesus had not yet come. And therefore, David does not have the benefit of hindsight that we are blessed with. He begins there in verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. Let me think about that. One of the few benefits of growing older is one's past memories. And one of my 
lasting memories as a child, was gazing up into a night sky, of seeing myriads of stars, the Milky Way in all of its glory. All this, of course, before the scourge of light pollution made this impossible. So then, when David looked up into a clear night sky, in all probability he would have seen something in the region of two to three thousand stars. Now, if he'd had a powerful pair of binoculars, that figure would have increased to something like one hundred thousand stars. But what if David had known, as Philip Yancey has put in his book of prayer, that if the Milky Way galaxy was represented as being the size of the entire continent of North America, then our own solar system would fit into a single coffee cup. And then bear in mind that the Milky Way itself is just one of perhaps 100 billion galaxies. Surely David would have been even more staggered at the immensity of God's creation than he obviously was. It quite literally blows my mind. I'm sure it did David's too. This is the God whom we serve. This is the God who cares for each and every one of us. The God who did all of this. David continues. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them? Now when... David asks the question, what is mankind? He's speaking in baffled wonder and amazement. It just doesn't make sense. Why should what is no more than a speck of dust on the light years of God's eternity matter to him? Now David here isn't doubting that mankind matters. He's not being sarcastic. No. He's just baffled as to why mankind does matter to God. It's not so much a question, more of an exclamation. Because in human terms, it just doesn't make sense. So then, what is it that's inspiring this passion in David? Well, for that, we go back to Genesis, to verse 27. That verse where we were reminded that man is made in the image of God. So then, when David asks what is man, he's certainly not being cynical or sarcastic. He's asking in wondering adoration. God has given man the prime role in creation. When David proclaims as he does in verses 6 to 8 of this psalm, he is in fact answering his own rhetorical question. He proclaims there, You made him rulers over the, earth, over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. But where did he find the inspiration for this insight? Well, for that, we go back to Genesis, this time chapter 1 and verse 28, where we read, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over ever -living, every living creature that moves on the ground. Is it any wonder, then, that David in the knowledge that this awesome God has such a love for him, sinner as he certainly was, that he now proclaims in wonder, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Can we, in the light of this, do any less? A final prayer. And what more fitting prayer could we make this morning 
than to echo David's words of this psalm. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Well, Robin, thank you for teaching us uh, from that passage this morning. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What a great thing to dwell on and to remember this week. That would be a good verse to learn, wouldn't it? And remember Joan shared earlier in her testimony how helpful it is uh, to learn verses. Well, it's been great having you uh, join with us this morning, uh, whether that's online here with Facebook or listening later on YouTube. Uh, thank you for doing that. Please do continue to uphold and pray for each other, uh, picking up the phone and, and contacting each other in the benefits. It's great to hear lots of stories of that. Do join us again on Wednesday, if you can, for our morning prayer service at 10 o'clock. And God willing, we'll be back again at half past 10 next Sunday. Just like to say uh, thank you to uh, Lydia and Glyn and Charlotte and Joan and Robin uh, and to Emu Music for the two songs we've used uh, this week for, for their part that they've all played in this morning's service. Let's draw our time formally uh, together now with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that your name is the most majestic name in all of the earth. Lord, forgive us when we uh, forget that. And thank you, Lord, for the amazing truth that we do matter to you, that you are mindful of us. Lord, keep us mindful of those things this week. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.